What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to week seven episode of the hot seat. And boy, do I got a lot of coaches on the hot seat today. So we just going to go ahead and get right into it because this might be a long one. So let's all put our hands together and give a round of applause to the first participant of the hot seat for week seven, Colorado Buffs head ball coach, Coach Prime, Dion Sanders. Put on an ultimate performance in the first half, laughing on the sidelines, all happy, and was an epic failure. The second half of, of, of uh, Friday night's game against Sanford, the smile turned into a frown after halftime. I don't know what Deion Sanders said to those guys at halftime. Seemed like he said, we got this game in hand and we can take it easy. But, oh, Stanford, they had a different attitude. Stanford came out <laughs> and put it on the ass. Uh, uh, Colorado and Dion was ahead 29 to nothing at halftime. First time, first half, they looked like a daggone juggernaut. They looked like a juggernaut. Stanford defense didn't have nothing for them, okay? Second half, they looked like straight ass. I mean, Jesus. You go into the halftime lead 29 to nothing. You supposed to win that daggone game. But lo and behold, not Dion and his Colorado Buffaloes. They couldn't do nothing. They couldn't stop not one pass that this uh, quarterback from uh, Stanford threw. Ellick, what's his name? Ellick Anomainer, some shit like that. But anyway, he was eating their ass up. No, no, uh, Daniels was the quarterback. Ellick Anomainer was the daggone uh, receiver that was getting all the daggone receiving yards. This man had all his receiving yards. In the second half and overtime. Damn, near 300 receiving yards in the second half. Okay, we're going to count overtime too. But damn, near 300 yards or 296 yards and three touchdowns on 13 catches. <laughs> All in the damn second half. And like I say, on Travis Hunter. And I don't know what Dion was thinking playing Travis Hunter. All of those plays, knowing he, he just came back from injury, been out for two or three damn weeks, and you're going to play him on offense and defense. You know he going to be tired, man. You know he was tired. And guess what? On the defensive end, it showed because he was getting ate up in the second half. So it is what it is. And Dion, your daggone def defensive coordinator, uh, uh, Chris Kelly, former Alabama assistant, I'm glad his ass gone too. And I'm glad Nick Saban didn't promote his ass. But anyway, uh, he need to be fired ASAP. ASAP. Okay, I mean, these teams are scoring on him and his defense at will, even though y'all can score too, but you can't stop nobody. And your offensive coordinator, he can go to because you don't have a, any hints of a running game. Okay, <laughs> I mean, not none. So, Dion, I expect you to be better next year and moving forward, but st this team is trash, and you might want to check into your staff too because they are not getting the job done just putting it bluntly okay but i think y'all will be better moving forward into future years but for this year i don't think it's going to happen you know i had you going to a bowl game i had you uh beating stanford okay but you didn't get it done and uh i don't think you're going to a bowl game now because you got a gauntlet you go gotta go through all right the only team i can see you beating is arizona and you might not beat them i'm just putting it out there so you you might be uh you might be uh, chalking up L's from here on out for this season, Dion. And I, I, I'm just being real with you, buddy. That is just the way it is. And the thing about it, you were so daggone uh, distraught at what Stanford did to you. You ain't even wear your damn sunglasses to the damn press conference like you usually do. Oh, man, they beat the sunglasses off you, uh, <laughs> Dion. Oh, all in the second half, I might add. And this quarterback, he threw. This man threw for 396 yards, four touchdowns, <clears throat> basically all in the damn second half because he ain't have like 30 or 40 yards passing in the daggone in the, fir in, the, in, the, in the first half. So he did all he needed to do in the second half. And after y'all laid down, because that's what you did. You laid down. So it is what it is. So I know it's your first time, Dion, but hey, welcome. To the hot seat. The next guy I got on the hot seat is no other 
than the Colorado Buffs <laughs> defensive coordinator, Chris Kelly. What a sham. What a sham. I'm glad you left uh, Alabama. And like I said, I'm glad Nick Saban didn't promote you to defense coordinator because our defense would look like Colorado's right now. You are hot garbage as a damn defense coordinator. You are worse than Pete Golden. And like I said when I was live for the game, Dion would have been better hiring Pete Golden over you. Oh, my goodness. You are freaking terrible. You are terrible. Okay? To allow a team to come back from a 29 nothing lead after the half is daggone ridiculous. You laid down on the daggone job, too. And I hope Dion was all up in your grill after this daggone game. He should have been in your grill, you know, during the game. And as I said, when I on my reaction video to the game, you look like you were working, but you weren't doing a damn thing. If it, it's a difference between putting in work and looking like you're putting in work, and you damn sure look like it, but you weren't doing shit. Not you weren't doing a damn thing. But but acting, you a good actor, Chris Kelly. <laughs> I don't know what these coaches see in you. I really don't. You are terrible. You are freaking terrible. Okay, I believe you was a safety coach for us last year. And that and and that's another reason we probably had so many problems last season, seasons, seasons prior because of your daggone tutelage at the safety position for daggone Alabama. That's probably why we had so much miscommunication between our safeties when you was at Alabama. You was terrible. You was terrible. And guess what? You still terrible. So Chris Kelly, you also. Welcome to the daggone hot seat. Hell, I should have had your ass on here a long damn time ago, even when, when, when you was at Alabama, because you hot trash. But anyway, let me get off of him. The next, the next person or coach slash assistant that I got on the hot seat today is no other than my Alabama Crimson Tides offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese. I done spoke on this before. Tommy Reese, you know, I was all for you coming to Alabama. Oh, let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Tommy Reese, through game, seven games, you done wore out your damn welcome. You need to go. Nick Saban, get rid of him. And, yeah, I'm calling for Tommy Reese to get the hell out of Tuscaloosa. Yeah, we might be 6-1. and one. But like Nick Saban said, we winning, but we ain't beating nobody, okay? And, and part of that is Tommy Reese and this garbage-ass offense that he trying to run, okay? You got a prolific running quarterback, and you won't even use his damn skill set. It's a damn shame. <laughs> no RPOs, no play-action pass, you, you know, no screens, <laughs> barely a slant, you know, no misdirections. It's the same shit every single time. He won't run outside the tackles. I mean, what's going on, Tommy Reese? You are tell I know what's wrong with Tommy Reese. For all y'all that didn't know, Tommy Reese is disgruntled that his boy, Tyler Buckner, is sitting his ass on the bench with his garbage ass. And when Tommy Reese, when you get your ass out of Tuscaloosa, take Tyler Buckner with you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Tommy Reese. I don't know how in the hell you 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 trick Nick Saban. Maybe it's Nick Saban A get to him. Oh Lord have mercy, man. They could have put me as an offense coordinator. I can do better than better than your ass. I mean, Jesus, I know you're young, but that ain't no daggone excuse. Joe Brady was young too. Matter of fact, I believe he was a year younger than your punk ass. But uh Tommy Reese, you need to get the hell out of uh, uh, Tuscaloosa at your earliest convenience. And yes, Nick Saban, you fired Lane Kiffin, one of the greatest offensive coordinators we ever had, right before a national championship game. I'm sure you can fire this bomb mid-season. Yes, Tommy Reese need to get out of Tuscaloosa ASAP. So welcome, Tommy Reese, once again to the damn hot seat. Plain and simple. My next coach slash assistant that's on the hot seat is no other than my Alabama Crimson Tides offensive line coach, Coach Wolford. 
what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I forgot. Before I get to Wolford, Tom Maurice, how about you try putting a tight end over there with uh with Caden Proctor? You know he's young. You know he's a freshman. How about putting a tight end over there to help him block? But every time you put a tight end over there, you send him out on a daggone passing route. No chip block. Nothing. Nothing. So that's another thing why you get, need to get your ass out of Tuscaloosa, Tom Maurice. Now back to Coach Wolford. What the hell are you coaching? What technique are you coaching? I know you go out and get these big ass offensive line, uh, offensive linemen, but damn, but damn, is it the linemen or is it your coaching? I I don't know. I know we say they big and slow, but damn, we under your tutelage, Coach Wolfer, we are dead last in the SEC in sacks, giving up sacks, dead last. Yeah, we might be dead last in the country. We probably gave up. Uh, we gave up uh, by the time we hit hit dag on one, two, three, four sacks, four games we had to gave up about sixteen sacks, five games it was twenty sacks, six games. Last week we gave up six sacks, so twenty six sacks. So we then gave up thirty five sacks through seven games. That's five sacks a game. Thirty five sacks through seven games on the yo. Tulich Coach Wolford, and guess what? We gonna beat the record of uh 20, 2021 when Bryce Young got sacked about 45, 46 times. We gonna beat that record, cause it ain't but seven games, and we done gave up 35 sacks. And guess what? In 2021, that counted the playoffs. I mean the 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 yeah the SEC championship and the playoff game. We just talking about the regular season now. So if we continue to give up 35 sacks, we going to be the gave up 60 sacks through 12 games. That is unheard of. Unheard of. Under your tutelage, Coach Wolford. You are freaking terrible. And you, I think this is your second year, third year, your second year. And guess what? You need to get your ass out of Tuscaloosa too. It ain't no damn secret. It ain't no secret. You and, you and Tom and Reese together is a disaster. A disaster. Alabama's offense have never looked so dang on bad. Never. Never. And I ain't going to even blame the daggone players. I'm not blaming the players. Surely not. You had them boys thinking that they about to play some murder ball and they just about to dominate these defensive linemen. No. Not, not even... A uh, damn, not even close, not even close. It seems like they always coming from that left side. They got a sack from the right side yesterday, but it seems like they always coming from Caden Proctor's side. And like I say, Tom and Reese don't give him no help. So, I mean, if if every other team see it, you know, why not? Why not do it? And we got Tennessee coming up this week with a pretty good dag on defense. And they're going to be coming out the middle row. And I'm expecting us to give up five or six more damn sacks, if not more. I'm going to just put it that way. All under your tutelage, Coach Warford. You are freaking terrible. And uh, you need to be out of dag on Tuscaloosa. ASAP. ASAP. Coach, uh, I mean, uh, Nick Saban, don't bring that food back. Get his ass up out of there. All right, so because he ain't doing the job, he ain't getting the job done. This is second year, and you don't give Tom and Reese not one more play call. I'll just put it that way. But anyway, Coach Warford, welcome your ass to the hot seat once a damn again. All right, next on the damn list, it's a lot of them. I'm telling you, next on the list, <laughs> Oregon head ball coach Dan Lennon who got to be the dumbest coach in all the college football, even dumber than daggone Mario Cristobal. Cristobal because the, the decision he made yesterday was even dumber than the decision Mario Cristobal made, and he made two of them. He didn't kick the field goal before the half, and then he want to go for it on fourth down, you know, at, at the end of the game and get a ball back to daggone uh, uh, Oregon. He going for it on fourth down, and he up in the damn game. You big dummy. You big dummy. And like I said last night, you didn't learn a damn thing from Kirby Smart, Dan Lennon. You are an idiot. But oh well, you cost your team the, the daggone game. You cost Bo Nix an undefeated season. Okay? You wanted to make it by yourself. <laughs> and look what happened. Look what happened. Now you're dumbfounded. 
you're dumb, Father. I put up part of your, I looked at part of your press conference, and you was right about one thing. You see it. It falls all on you. All on you. At least make them drive the length of the daggone field with such a little amount of time. But no, not Dan Lanning. Dan Lanning want to make himself the hero. Oh, boy, did you see the decision that I made? Not many coaches would have made that decision. you damn right. Many would. <laughs> many would. But this your first time on the hot seat, Dan Lanning, so I ain't going to be on you too hard. But you got to be the dumbest head coach in all the college football. And like I said, even dumber than Mario Cristobal. So, Dan Lanning, welcome to the hot seat. Next on the list. Next on the list, Texas A&M head ball coach, Mr. Mr. Jimbo Fisher. You know I can't leave you off this time. I left you off last week, but I can't leave you off this week. Because guess what? You did the same damn thing two weeks in a row. And the fans let you know about it when you did it uh, last week against Alabama. Half time, right before the half, okay, you get a, a, a third down stop, two minutes left on the clock. Instead of you calling a timeout to save some time, all right, you let uh, uh, Tennessee run down the clock. Then they punt. Okay, you got the ball with over a minute left. What do you do before half? You get in a damn victory formation. I'm not, that's a dumb decision, too. Okay, Mario Cristobal, Jimbo Fish, and Dan Lanning, the three dumbest coaches in all the college football. But anyway, you are, uh, that's what you did. You got in victory formation before the halftime. You didn't even try to score. They didn't even try to pick up no yards. They didn't even try to get in field goal range. Who does that? Do you have any confidence in Max Johnson and your offense? Come on, man. You got some, you got some guys on offense, man. What are you doing? But it's all good. You took a L. You probably could have got, got some points out of that dang on deal. But no, not Jimbo Fisher. Terrible clock management. You, you, it, it's non-existent to Jimbo Fisher to use timeouts during the first half. That don't exist in his mind. But yet, they had him tap as one of the best coaches in call, all the college football. I've been trying to tell y'all, Jimbo Fisher is a fraud. He's a fraud, and he's robbing the hell out of Texas A&M. And Texas A&M, y'all might just want to chalk up the cash that y'all on. Go ahead and pay him and hire y'all a damn good head coach to get y'all over this hump because Jimbo Fisher ain't going to do it. Y'all got too much talent over there to be losing all these games. You got too much talent to be 4-3 and three right now, which that's what I think you are, 4-3. and three. So, I mean, damn, man. Damn, Tennessee. I'm not Tennessee, but uh, Texas A&M. Y'all, you got too much damn talent. So, if y'all wanna keep keep that up, then you you go ahead. But you got too much talent to be four and three. You brought in the number one recruiting class last year, and a lot of those guys are playing. Should be better than this. It's Jimbo Fisher and nobody else. So once again, Jimbo Fisher, welcome to the hot seat. Next on the list, I told you it's a lot of them. Oh, who are that? Who are that next on the list? That old ball coach for those Auburn Tigers. <laughs> coach Hugh Freeze, the savior. The savior of the Auburn Tigers. Well, guess what? He ain't saving nothing as of yet. Now, he might, you know, make y'all into a better team, make y'all into a threat sometime in the future. But he's terrible now. The old Jaden Daniels threw 325 yards on your daggone defense. And <laughs> Jaden Daniels threw for 325 yards on your defense. And they rushed for 238 yards on your defense. Oh, my damn goodness, man. Well, y'all, your, your offense did put up 293 yards. That's about it. I'm surprised you passed for 154 yards. That, that was surprising. You had 139 yards rushing. But the key, Jimbo Fisher, to be in LSU, you got to throw the ball. They have proven that they are a terrible defense in the passing game, running game too. But they done proved time and time again that they are a terrible football team. But guess what? 
your offense and your quarterback play is is even worse, Hugh Freeze. You are your your shit is terrible. Your shit is terrible. And hopefully, hopefully, the offseason, you will make strides to improve. Now, this is Hugh Freeze first time on the hot seat. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I'm putting him on the hot seat, because he got beat by 30 damn points. They got beat by 30 points by LSU. Lord have mercy. Y'all really went to Death Valley and, and got killed. It was a damn shame. So Hugh Freeze ain't going to stay on YouTube, man. You know, I like you, Hugh Freeze. But damn, what, what, what was you doing the, the whole week instead of preparing for the game? I wonder. Hopefully you went down on the damn strip. That's all I'm going to say. Hopefully you went on the strip, Hugh Freeze, because it'll come out. You can believe that. All right, for spending your hot dollars. But anyway, oh my goodness, that Auburn and Hugh Freeze and your defense, you let them boys put up 563 yards on you. Oh, what a damn shame. Mm, mm, mm. But oh well, it is what it is. So Hugh Freeze, welcome to the hot seat. And once again, next one on the list is some more coming after that. Uh, Mark, well, Headball coach of the Kentucky Wildcat, Mark Stoops. Mark Stoops, Mark Stoops, Mark Stoops. First of all, you started out your week wrong. That's all I'm going to say. You started out your week wrong, calling out your fans, talking about pony up some more money for NIL, talking about Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart, paying for their players. Well, you know that's a damn lie. Paying for their damn players. So... You started the week out all wrong, and you finished it all wrong, too, all right? Y'all was bragging about running for over 300 yards, I believe, on the Florida Gators. And you ain't, and you ain't ran for shit since then. You ain't did a damn thing since then. I believe you ran for like 50-something yards on, on Georgia. And yesterday, you ran for, uh, uh, oh, 179 yards, so that's good, but... Shouldn't have been bragging about rushing for 300 yards on daggone Florida. Because all you did since then was rush in the two ass whoopings. That's all you did. And uh, yeah, y'all got out to a 14 point lead. But guess what Missouri did? Put up 38 on us and got dang on points. Oh my goodness. No, they did. Uh, y'all did score seven in the, in the, in the, uh, in the third quarter. But they did put up 20 unanswered points, and then they put up 18 unanswered points uh, in the fourth, fourth quarter. So, like I say, the game is uh, three quarter, I mean four quarters, not two. Mr. Mark Stoops, this will teach you not to run your damn mouth. I can, I can tell you that. You may not say nothing about now another program until you got yours under control. And the bad thing, Mark Stoops, you was on the rank for one damn week. He was ranked for one week, man. Oh, my goodness, man. Boy, these Kentucky fans, I know they upset. You done called them out and every damn thing. And still, they showed up to support you against Missouri. And Missouri came into your house and spanked your ass. Yes, they did that. They did. The Missouri Tigers, uh, they, I think they for real this year. I think they for real this year. They getting the job done. They doing enough to get the job done. And Missouri beat you by 17 points. Mm, 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 mm. Damn, Kentucky, after all that bragging about your rushing game. Oh, man, you done took a 51 to, thir 51 to 13 lead. I mean, a 51 to 13 ass whooping from Georgia. Then a 38 to 21 ass whooping from uh, 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 Kentucky. After you was bragging about bragging, uh, bragging about running for 300 yards on Florida. Don't brag no more. Oh, my damn goodness. That is 89 points in two games. Mm, mm, mm. But, oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, Mark Stoops. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is your first time on the hot seat this year, too. Okay? Welcome to the hot seat, Mark Stoops. But don't you let your team brag no more. Okay? Don't call out your fans no more. Don't call out Kirby Smart no more. All right? Just shut your damn mouth and try coaching. That's, that's the only advice. I got for you. All right. Next on the hot seat. Oh, you know I can't forget about. 
You know I can't forget about old, old Miami headball coach. I can't forget about them Miami Hurricanes. They ain't even make no reaction video to that ass whooping that they took on last night versus the North Carolina Tar Heels. I ain't even talk about it. I, I, I let Miami slide this week, but I can't let old Mario Cristobal slide, okay? He is still one of the dumbest coaches in all the college football, okay? He cost his team the game last week. Yes, he did. And then went to it came up here, well, man, in North Carolina. I'm not in Raleigh, but I'm in North Carolina. And came up here and got his ass tore off last night. <laughs> now, I got to admit, them ball players from Miami, they put up a good showing last night. But, uh, hey, being close don't get you no cigar. Miami had a, almost 400 Passing yards, old Tyler Van Dyke, 391. Okay, they, but they only had 91 rushing yards, which is not too bad. But they gave up 235 yards rushing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, what, 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 what's up with all them, them daggone uh, high-profile players y'all got out the transfer portal? What are they doing, man? Eh? Oh, y'all done got y'all a second L. And guess what? Both of them, both of y'all losses is in the daggone uh, 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 ACC. Boy, is that bad? Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's in the ACC. Y'all lost to uh, <laughs> Georgia Tech and UNC, both games, back-to-back, back-to-back. Y'all was happy beating up on Miami of Ohio. Y'all was happy beating up on Bethune-Cookman and Temple, you know. You even beat Texas A&M. Somehow, that was a one-off, like I always say. But anyway, and then, you know, you got the old Georgia Tech ACC opponent. Mario Cristobal made the dumbest decision. One of the dumbest decisions in all the college football over the past two weeks. And you lost. And then you went to UNC and got your ass toe out the frame. Back-to-back -back losses. And you know what's, And you know what was so bad about it? Georgia Tech beat your ass in your, in your own stadium. Well, it ain't your own stadium, but it's like a home game for y'all. That damn Miami Dolphins stadium. So, hey, it is what it is. You win some and you lose some. But for Miami, you lose <laughs> quite often. I'm going to just put it that way. So, for you Miami fans, your season is over. Done. You, can't, you ain't going to the ACC championship. No playoffs for you. You just playing for pride. Once again, like I always say, year after year after year, on the in, in the offseason, when you Miami fans are hyping your Miami Hurricanes up. And that's all they are. Hype. Mario Cristobal, he was supposed to be the savior. Well, nope. He'll be on the unemployment line soon, too. Thanks to the Miami Hurricanes. So, Mario Cristobal, once again, welcome to the hot seat. All right, next on the damn list. Last, last, but not least, that damn Lincoln Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no gold under the rainbow for those USC Trojans, right? They came all the way from sunny, from southern, sunny Southern California, took that trip to South Bend Indiana and got their ass molly whopped to the tune of 48 to 20. Got your ass beat by four touchdowns. Oh, daggone Caleb Williams with his bad self. Throwing, handing out picks like he handing out candy. Man, his Heisman Trophy, back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy hopes are over. Are over. All the way. Over. Oh, man, Lincoln Riley, what you going to do, baby? What you going to do? 28 points? Oh, my goodness, you got your ass toe out the frame, man. And guess what? Your defense only gave up 251 51 yards. That ain't bad. 126 passing yards and 125 rushing yards. That is not bad. Finally, your defense show up, but then your offense take five steps back. Caleb Williams take five steps back. 
mm, mm. when your offense, your defense finally decide to show up. Yeah, your dang offense fell a damn sleep. Oh, my damn goodness. Y'all, the, the, the caliber offense y'all got, and y'all only put up 302 yards, of, and Caleb Williams with his bad self only throw for 199 yards. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all supposed to be this high flying offense. Your, your leading receiver only had 51 yards on six catches. Y'all supposed to be this high flying offense. Oh, my dang on goodness, man. Your, your, your quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams, only one touchdown and three interceptions. Oh, oh man. And guess what? Notre Dame scored on all those interceptions. Not field goals but touchdown. <laughs> Ain't that some shit. But anyway, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. All right. Uh, Lincoln Riley, is this his first time on the hot seat? I think this is his first time on the No, it ain't. Because I had had that terrible. Well, yeah, it's his first time on the hot seat. But I did make a video about that terrible ass defense. But they showed up uh, yesterday in South Bend. But they, they, they. they <laughs> oh, Kayla Williams, what are you doing? What are you doing? I sure would enjoy every one of them turnovers, too. I, I, I love to bask in Southern Cal's misery. I love to bask in Miami's misery, Auburn's misery. Yes, I do love it. I do love it. And I don't, I don't even want to. I don't even like basking in Texas A&M misery no more. Cause I know Texas A&M can have a great team if it weren't for Jimbo Fisher. So I like basking in Jimbo Fisher's misery, but not the Texas A&M players and fans, cause they got some damn good players. All right, and I feel sorry for them, and I feel sorry for the Texas A&M fans. They was already calling for his head last week, and I'm sure they calling for it this week. I just got to go to Twitter, but anyway, uh. Southern Cal, Lincoln Riley, I'm glad you lost. I don't feel bad for you. Don't feel sorry for you. I know it's your first loss, but guess what? You got some more coming. You got some more coming. Because guess what? Next week, you're going to get your ass beat by Utah. Week uh, and week uh, and week 11, you're going to get your ass beat by Washington. Week 12, you're going to get your ass beat by Oregon. And week 13, you're going to get your ass beat by UCLA. So, hey, guess what? You uh, USC fans, you ain't got nothing to look forward to but a bunch of damn L's. So, without further ado, Lincoln Riley, welcome to the hot seat. And that concludes this episode, week seven's hot seat. I hope y'all enjoyed. I know it was long, but hey, several people have had to go on that hot seat for week seven. All right? So, that's all I got right now. And roll damn tide. <laughs>